One of the many reasons I'm glad I started Cool Mom way back in 2008 is I got to document my kids' young life. And now they are a teen and a tween. Uh, so I love watching them when they were little. And these three, my now 15 year old daughter, is the cutest little thing and uh, so tiny, still had a bottle. And it was back when it was just, just me and her, you know, just I had my one kid and I love them. And so I hope you enjoy these sweet ones with me and Viv. So we picked five books at nap time and at bedtime. And you'd think with all the books that she has, it'd be, you know, no problem. I always have something I can read that I'm not totally sick to death of. But it doesn't seem to happen that often. Now Viv likes the um, this little one, the Let's Go to the Zoo. I don't really like it that much because it has these flaps and there's not really much of a narrative and then I just gotta like turn over the flap and turn over the flap. So it doesn't keep me engaged at all. The other thing that is my beef is the lengthy Go Nowhere books. Now I know Harold and the Purple Crayon's a classic, but Harold could make his point in a third of the time. Let me tell you the ones I like. Brown Bear, Brown Bear, quick, to the point, gets it over with, got it. Sheep in a Jeep, I love Sheep in a Jeep. It rhymes, it moves, Sheep are kind of funny. I'm happy with that one. Um, a Cat and a Dog, I like that. Again, there's a conflict between Cat and Dog, they resolve it, we move on. And this is a sweet one, If Kisses Were Colors. It's nice. How to deal with it when you've got to read the books but you get tired of them. Here's what we do now, right Viv? We go, tell me when to stop. Tell me when to stop, remember? Okay, well I say, tell me when to stop, and she says stop, and so I randomly pick five ones. I'm just trying to keep it exciting for me. Since it's kind of the year of women in politics, I've been thinking about how my daughter and your daughter could become president of the United States. And I've written this very important document on the back of an envelope where I write all my important documents. Okay, first off, need to enroll her in a church, and pretty darn quick. And it can't be one where the preacher says anything funky. It's got to be like a real bland, mainstream, just straight up Christian church. Okay, another one. Uh, she needs to connect to the South. She doesn't live in the South, so I, uh, my father's family's from the South. So I'm thinking like, you know, maybe those cracker relatives that I don't talk to anymore, I could cultivate a relationship there so then she can have those anecdotes in her speech like, I remember fishing with Uncle Floyd or something. Or maybe send her to college in the South. But she's got to have a Southern connection. It's, it's, it's really important, especially if she ends up being a Democrat. Okay, she needs to start studying military and um, economics because not enough women have that background, so that's very important. Oh, she needs to get married and have kids, because nobody trusts a politician who hasn't gotten married and have kids, and who can't also use anecdotes about me and my kids and my children, it's for the future and my grandkids' future, and all that stuff. Uh, and also, she needs to wear solid colors, yeah. no patterns, just not telegenic. Fortunately for me and for her, an eccentric mom doesn't yeah. seem to be a problem. Think Virginia Clinton, yeah. Lillian Carter, uh, McCain's mom. I think everybody forgets the uh, forgives the eccentric mom. You ready to be president, Viv? Okay, moms, um, enough with you bringing along the husbands. I've really had it. You know, you think you're going to have a time, a little play day with your girlfriend and their kids, and then something's like, oh, well, it ends up Frank's not working. He wants to come over, too. And I'm like, well, I don't really want Frank there. I mean, you know, it's like now I can't talk. Oh, you hold your head. Let me kiss the big butt. But I'm okay. Yeah, you are okay, honey. So now Frank's there, and I can't really talk about what I was going to talk about anyway, and now I'm going to have to go through a whole, like, kind of judging their relationship anyway. But it's like, look, you know, when you're single, you don't want your girlfriend to suddenly bring her date along. You know, you just want to talk to her. And it's the same thing with kids. I mean, I think they think, oh, well, the kids are there. They're not really going to have their girl talk, but we really are going to have our girl talk. But now if the husband's there, i got to kind of scurry in the kitchen to have a kind of soto voice with the mom in there. Just let's relax, you know, I mean, look, guys, you do your thing, we'll do our thing, and, uh, oh, the worst, though, I was at a party, and this girlfriend says this really intimate detail, something I told her in confidence, in front of her husband, like, Daphne said, rah, 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 and I was like, oh, and he was embarrassed, and I was embarrassed, I'm like, what, you know, just because you married him, he's not suddenly my BFF, I mean, I'll be polite to him, but let's keep husbands in perspectives, they're just there so we can have children.